Are the days over where we needed to create Power Automate workflows and Microsoft Forms to collect data securely and bring it together in tools like SharePoint and Microsoft Lists? Well, it may possibly be, because with the new Forms experience in Microsoft Lists, we can now collect data securely with integration straight into Lists. Yes, no more Microsoft Forms are needed to collect that all important data. Well, today I'm gonna to be taking you through that journey, creating a new form to collect information for one of our projects using Microsoft Lists and the new Forms experience. And as part of that, we're also gonna see the ability to create different custom forms for different types of stakeholder. And in addition, I think it's really important to note its limitations because yes, it does come with some. And I'm gonna outline what those are and whether you need to consider those and keep your forms in Microsoft Forms or whether you can move over to this new model of working. So before we dive in, I'd love it, hit that like button to let me know that you like this content. Even better, hit that subscribe button so you can come on a journey to turn yourself into a productivity superstar, be able to use the tools in Microsoft 365 in a better way and to make you even more productive. So let's dive into the forms experience in lists and find out how it can work for you today. So let's get started with creating our Microsoft list. We need somewhere to store all of that data that we're gonna get back from our respondents. And the best way to do that is go into Microsoft lists. And here I'm using the web experience. We can then click on the new list button at the top of the screen, and we can then select from templates available from Microsoft, or we can do something meeting your own requirements. And therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and select the blank list at the top of the screen. And I can now give my list a name, an icon and a color to get started. Now with that done, let's go ahead and select where this list needs to be saved. I have a choice. I can either save this into my list, meaning my own OneDrive for business, and therefore it's only accessible by me. But instead, let's go ahead and choose one of the available teams I work in, being the Project Greenspace Microsoft team meaning anyone else in the team will also have access to this data, which is really important. Let's go ahead and click on the Create button to create our new list. So here in Lists, we're now going to consider what we're going to do to build out our data set. And it's pretty easy to go and create data inside of Lists. We get a title column on the left-hand side. What I'm going to do is click into that, and we can now go to Column Settings, and I can rename this column so it's more relevant to our feedback. By making that small change and clicking save, we now have a column to catch the name of the respondent. So now let's add other columns into our data set, all relevant to the data that I need to capture from all of our respondents. With our columns all added, we can now click on the add new item to the left hand side and we can see all of the information we're now going to collect. Your name, the perception of the scope, areas of concern, and so forth. This is using the standard list feature to look at our forms engine, but using new capability, we can now collect data in a different way. Let's go ahead and close this out. And now we're gonna choose a new forms option at the top of our list. When we select this here, we can go and create ourselves a brand new form. And in doing so, we can see a different experience immediately that's more aligned to Microsoft Forms. Now initially, we see all of the columns that I have inside of the list, shown here in the display on the screen. Now of course, what we can do is begin to modify this form to better meet your requirements. So as an example, let's uncheck Select All and we can start afresh and define what columns of data we need to include and also give it the all important title and a description in the first instance. Now with the title and description set on our form, we can begin to add in our fields. Now it may also be tempting to click on add new field, but this is adding a brand new column inside of your list. It's not using one of your pre-existing columns that you've just created previously. So instead, what we can do on the left hand side is check the columns it would like to include inside of your form. Now here I've added your name. And once again, I can then add further columns on the left hand side to align to the form requirements. With our columns now added into our form, we can see it's starting to take shape, but there are some important considerations here. You'll see that on here, there's no ability to set required fields. That information is gonna be coming back from your list. In addition, if you wanted to rename one of these fields, such as your name and add more detail, 
You could certainly use a column description or the column name, but this does synchronize back to your Microsoft list in your columns. So if I now update this field to show your full name instead of your name and also give it a description and then set that change, will actually apply to the underlying Microsoft list in real time. And as we can see, the column name has been updated to your full name. So changing these columns does impact your source list. So do be careful of that. And now we have all of our columns and our fields to be captured, we can also have a look at additional settings. We can also set custom themes. Here I'll use this green theme, but I could also change it depending on my requirements and select create your own style to use different theme colors. As you can see, that can take place with the background and the theme changing, but there's no ability to set a custom background like a picture or an image that you may have seen before in Microsoft Forms. Under the settings, you can also see, I can actually turn this form on and off. By unchecking this, it actually means the form is not able to be submitted. We're not receiving any further responses. But right now, of course we are. And I can give a custom message at the end to thank someone for fulfilling in our response. With that change now made in that message, let's go ahead and consider how can we have people then fill it in for us. We're not gonna want them to give access to the list directly because of course we only want them to provide a response. So all we need to do is go to send form and we can now click on copy link. It is again important to note that today it is only supported with one single link type being people in your organization having the ability to respond. Yes, it's not supported for externals or specific people. But what I can do is click on copy link and I could now share that on an email or a website to have people fill in that information. Let's go and check out what that experience looks like for someone who's filling in the new form. So here we are inside of Megan's account and she has that link that's been shared with her. She's now followed that link and we can see that on the experience for Megan, this does not look like Microsoft lists. No, this is a new forms experience. Now Megan can begin to fill in this form with all the relevant information and submit it to go straight back into that list. Let's go ahead and fill this out and get it submitted back to our list. With the information all now complete, let's go ahead and click on submit. And we'll now see the custom message that we set inside of our Microsoft list. And that response has now been submitted. And with that submission, we can now see it exists inside of the Microsoft list, including Megan's name and all of those responses. In real time, it is refreshed. Now you did see inside of that form that I didn't need to request Megan's name. No, we collect that when someone submits it inside of lists and that new forms experience. To see that, all we need to do is click on add column and we can show or hide columns. And then we can set created by and also the created date and click on apply. And we'll now see that Megan created this record. So whilst I added a full name column, there's no need for you to actually request that because we're gonna be capturing it inside of the list experience using the new forms. So if we take a quick pause, are you struggling to navigate Microsoft 365? Does it feel like a vast universe of different tools and data that you just struggle to understand and how it can best improve the way that you work? Well, we meet a lot of people that are struggling in that way. And here at Your 365 Coach, we can help you through coaching, masterclasses, and learning to be able to improve how you use Microsoft 365 and supercharge the way that you, your team, and your business work. To find out more, head to the website below where you can get in contact or even enroll into one of our many different masterclasses. And even better, if you need to find out more about Microsoft 365, you'll find access to a free Microsoft 365 ebook you can download today that will be able to show you even better ways of working across all of those tools. Otherwise, let's dive back in to Microsoft Lists and continue our forms experience. Now, all of that is great, but remembering that there's different perspectives to be considered in our meetings, and sometimes one form is not enough. There could have been senior people inside of our meeting, and could we then have a different forms experience asking different questions for those different audience members? We absolutely can. We can see here that there were two columns of data that Megan didn't fill out. The alignment to the company objectives and the perception of the strategic objectives for the project. 
I didn't want Megan or anyone else filling that in that was not a member of the senior team. So we're going to need to fix that with a new form. To do that, let's go back into the forms button and we can see the form that we have here that we created a moment ago. Let's click on new form. Once again, uncheck in select all and we can give it a title and also a description in readiness. Once again, with that now done, on the right hand side, we can add in those relevant fields. This time, I'm going to add in the perception of the project scope, as well as the alignment, the strategic goals, and also the strategy itself. I wanted to also change the ordering. Well, that's very simple to do. Left click and drag, and we can adjust that on our form. Now that has all been set, let's go ahead and again click on send form, and we can once again click on copy link. And we can now share that with our senior stakeholders to get this information collected rather than the form that we originally created for Megan and the rest of the team. And if we now log into the account for Nestor, who's a director of the company, we can see the experience that Nestor has is completely different to what Megan's seen. Yes, this form has different information to be collected aligning to our form requirements. Let's go ahead and fill this out and once again see it in our list. So with our data now collected, you're probably wondering, well, where's the value? I could have done this in Microsoft Forms and I may be still unsure about why on earth I'd even bother with this approach. While remembering that Microsoft Lists offers further customizations, we can use filters and the like to filter and manipulate the data inside of our table. For example, I could do a filter based upon the alignment to our strategic goals. I could then create that as a custom view using the drop down under all items to say this is a new view that me and the team have access to. We can't do that inside of Microsoft Forms. In addition, I know a lot of you have requested notifications in forms that go to different people when a new response or request has been received. While in here, I can have it so when a new item is created to send an email to any email address allowing further customization that forms cannot achieve without more workflow integration with Power Automate. Not only that, if we also look under the integrate option, we'll be able to integrate this into Power BI and visualize the data, giving you more charts that you have not seen before when using Microsoft Forms. And importantly, this approach simplifies your data security model. The data itself has been stored in the Microsoft team I'm working with meaning my other members of the Project Green Space team have access to this data, regardless if my account moves on or if I leave the company. Even better, what happens if someone finds a link to your list? Well, let's give that a try. Let's go back into Megan's account and this time browse directly to the SharePoint list where we're collecting all of these responses. And as you'll see here, Megan can see no responses. Even if the link was accidentally shared with others, all of those responses are kept confidential and are only visible to the relevant people who have access to the list itself. So all of these combine to provide pretty good advantages in using a new forms experience in Microsoft lists and providing new capabilities that you may have not been able to experience before unless you've built custom workflows for Microsoft Forms. So you're probably wondering, well, where's the catch? There's gotta be some elements that are not supported using this new approach. And you're right. Those limitations, what I've seen so far, can mean that you may still be stuck with Microsoft Forms for particular scenarios. For example, you cannot share the Forms experience with external people outside of your company. No, that's not supported. I mean, if you want to collect data externally, well, Microsoft Forms is currently the only option to do that in. Also, there's no ability to do custom branding. No, you can't add any logos or custom pictures, rather only choosing colors and themes that are not maybe going to align to your corporate branding or identity. And importantly, what about branching? Can we support that inside of the new experience? And the answer is sadly not. Now you may know in forms you can branch, meaning the certain answer to a question can lead to a different question inside of your survey or form. Sadly, that's not supported in a new experience in the forms and lists, but hopefully we'll see that in the future because to me, it's a really important feature that's currently missing. And what about attachments? Well, firstly, I thought this would be a great tool to have for invoices and the like, and then realized, well, we couldn't do that because there's no ability to have attachments using the new forms experience. 
And of course, while that isn't generally supported in Microsoft Forms, unless you're sharing it with internal parties. But the consideration here is, it would be ideal to have things like attachments added into your form that you could then have to progress a business activity or a process. Hopefully again, we'll see that in the future because of course List does support attachments. It's rather the forms experience today doesn't allow that. So there are some limitations for you to note to decide if this is the right option for you. But as a step forward in List in the way that we can collect data securely from your colleagues, well, it's a big step forward. So you can get started in using this capability as it's rolling out today. And even better, it comes with no additional license charge. Yes, no more credit card details are needed to access this feature. Just click on the Forms button inside of Lists. So I hope I've now demystified and showed you a new way of working when it comes to new Forms experience in Microsoft Lists and new ways that you can collect data securely from your colleagues in the safe knowledge it's all in Microsoft Lists. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button to let me know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to subscribe and become a productivity superstar and use the tools that you already have in better ways. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.